Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. I'm Carla Elizondo. We are continuing the reading of Awakened Imagination by Neville Goddard. We're on chapter five, titled The Coin of Heaven. Does a firm persuasion that a thing is so make it so? And the prophet replied, all poets believe that it does. And in ages of imagination, this firm persuasion removed mountains but many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything, Blake. And that good. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Persuasion is an inner effort of intense attention. Persuasion is an inner effort of intense in attention. To listen attentively as though you heard is to evoke. To listen attentively as though you heard is to evoke, to activate. By listening, you can hear what you want to hear and persuade those beyond the range of the outer ear. Speak it inwardly in your imagination only. Make your inner conversation match your fulfilled desire. Make your inner conversation match your fulfilled, your fulfilled desire. What you desire to hear without, you must hear within. Embrace the without within and become one who hears only that which implies the fulfillment of his desire and all the external happenings in the world will become a bridge leading to the objective realization of your desire. Your inner speech is perpetually written all around you in happenings. That's a beautiful way to put it. Your inner speech, the inner dialogue, how we talk to ourselves is perpetually written all around you in happenings. So when you look around your life, your situation, you wrote that story in your mind first. Your inner speech is perpetually written all around you in happenings. Learn to relate these happenings to your inner speech and you will become self-taught. By inner speech is meant those mental conversations which you carry on with yourself all day. They may be inaudible when you are awake because of the noise and distractions of the outer world of becoming, but they are quite audible in deep meditation and dream. But whether they be audible or inaudible, you are their author and fashion your world in their likeness. There is a God in heaven and heaven is within you that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. How I know that, I don't know why. Nebuchadnezzar. This is super Bible talk, peeps. What shall be in the latter days? Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Inner speech from premises of fulfilled desire is the way to create an intelligible world of your own. Inner speech from premise of fulfilled desire is the way to create an intelligible world for yourself. Observe your inner speech for it is the cause of future action. Observe your inner speech for it is the cause of future action. That is classic cognitive behavioral therapy. We teach, we all learn, our thoughts create an emotion and that emotion drives an action. If we're not happy with the action, we have to explore the emotion and behind every emotion is first a thought or a belief, usually a negative cognitive belief. They call them automatic negative thoughts or amps, automatic negative thoughts. What automatic negative thoughts do you have that make you feel not good? That make you do things that you don't want to do? Inner speech from premise of fulfilled desire is the way to create an int intelligible world for yourself. Observe your inner speech for it is the cause of future action. Inner speech reveals the state of consciousness from which you view the world. Make your inner speech match your fulfilled desire, for your inner speech 
is manifested all around you in happenings. You know, when someone does something, there's actually a new book out. <sighs> Who's the doctor that did just wrote that book as a psychologist um, with Oprah about what happened to you? Not what's wrong with you, but what happened to you. So it's kind of exploring the topic. If people act out, they have behaviors or they're dysregulated or they have problems or they're not really pleasant people to be around or they have destructive behavior instead of saying to them what's wrong with you you can change that question to what happened to you because they're just reacting to their life circumstances whether they created or not or if they were a victim in their childhood and then they continued to um have that wound fester into adulthood so instead of looking at somebody and say, what is wrong with you? What's the matter with you? It's like, what happened to you to make you act like this? And the same with people. When you see people who are negative or instead of saying, what is wrong with you? Or get your head out of the gutter. We can say, what are you believing? What are you believing to make you talk like that? What are you believing to make you act like that? What are you believing to make you say something like that? What are you believing? People are just a walking representation of what they believe. If you look at, this is an assignment. If you look at people today, anybody, just people watch. I guarantee you, you can really intuitively Find out what they believe just by looking at them. What do they believe to be true? Try that exercise. It's really, it's really fascinating. So make your inner speech match your fulfilled desire. For your inner speech is manifested all around you in, in happenings. If any man offended not in word, if any man offended not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the holy body, the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, though they be so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, with, with a whithersoever, whithersoever, the governor listeth. Okay. Even so, the tongue is a little member <laughs> and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. All right. That was, I think, scripture. Okay. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to also, and able also to bridle the whole body. Okay, so basically saying our tongue and our words run the whole ship, just like a helm of a ship runs the big thing, the little bit in the horse's mouth moves that big horse, this little thing, our tongue, our speech, our words run this whole body. The whole manifested world goes to show us that what use we have made of the word inner speech. An uncritical observation of our inner talking will reveal to us the ideas from which we view the world. Inner talking mirrors our imagination and our imagination mirrors the state with which it is fused. Inner talking, inner talking mirrors our imagination and our imagination mirrors the state with which it is fused. If the state with which we are fused is the cause of the phenomenon of our life, then we are relieved of the burden of wondering what to do, for we have no alternative but to identify ourselves with our aim. And inasmuch as the state with which we are identified mirrors itself in, the, in our inner speech, then to change the state with which we are fused, we must first change our inner talking. And it is our inner conversation which make tomorrow's facts. 
It is our inner conversation that make tomorrow's facts. I'm gonna stop right there. This is a, a kind of a long chapter. We'll pick up tomorrow. I wanna keep these short and sweet. So we'll pick up here tomorrow, continuing chapter five from Awakened Imagination by Neville Goddard, uh, The Coin of Heaven. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a real kind of reminder and a lesson to watch the self-talk. What are you believing? What, what's in your jukebox? What tape is on play over and over? What automatic thoughts do you have? Do you have automatic negative thoughts about the same things? And if so, do you want to change them? Be aware of your self-talk today and know that your inner talk today will determine how tomorrow will go because we truly create our entire lives with our words, with our thoughts. Everything starts with a thought. Every single thing in this world first started with a thought. That's how creation is made. You think it, you feel it, you do it. That's the only way anything gets made. Sometimes it's haphazard. Sometimes we just think it and do it, then ooh, that's a mess. But it doesn't without a filter of an emotion. Fear, anxiety, worry, rushing, or happiness, faith, contentment. Chaos in the world, chaos is fear. We see a lot of that today. What thoughts are we emotionally involved in? What thoughts are you emotionally involved in? Take one example of your life today, of a situation that you wanna change. And sit quietly for just a couple minutes, even if you have to go you know, steal away in a bathroom stall. Just take a deep breath and get in touch with the emotion. Is it anger? Is it rage? Underneath that, is it resentment? Is it hurt? Is it pain? Is it grief? What are you feeling or what are you suppressing? It always expresses in the body. It can be, you know, just an upset stomach, a headache, a little tension, clenching your jaws at night. The body keeps a score. We don't get away. There's no free lunch. We, we, we cannot fool the body. Whatever we got going on up here or our emotions, it will express. And if it's negative or painful as, as inside, so outside, above, so below, it behooves us to take inventory. So see a situation you don't like, get in touch with the emotion and explore it, and then connect at least one or two thoughts, automatic thoughts that come up about that situation and how you're feeling and ask yourself, how can I see this differently? How can I word this differently? Is this true? Do I want to believe this anymore? Even if it might be true on the outside world, what do, what would I rather believe instead? Even if it's a lie, if you, if you believe it, it must be true. A lot of the negative things that we believe in are emotionally involved with were not true to begin with, but we were fed a lie over and over or an assumption or a negative comment and we believed it to be true. Take something that doesn't make you feel good, identify a thought, write it on a piece of paper. How would you rather feel? What would you rather believe? And that's how you make an affirmation, a mantra, auto-suggestion over and over and over. I love doing this, it works. If you ever want help, I'm your girl. Contact me, message me, I would love to walk you through that process. It's very, very powerful. Auto-suggestion and affirmations changed my life. That's how you do it. That's how we learn anything. We weren't smart genius babies to learn the language we speak. We only speak it is because we were around it. You don't know every lyric to a Mariah Carey song or whatever your favorite artist is because you memorized it. You might've sat down, but because we just, um, what's the Christmas song by Mariah Carey? All I want for Christmas. We know that song because we hear it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Some of you might hate that song. Well, guess what? Even though you hate it, your mind still knows it because it was just simply through repetition. That's how you change a thought. If you want more help with that, let me know. I'm your girl. Have a wonderful day, y'all.